Thank you for joining me for another episode of Intuition, Your First Sense. If this is the first time you're tuning in, welcome. I so appreciate you checking this podcast out and joining the best listeners across the airwaves, let's face it, and for expanding your own intuition, your own coaching, your own wanting to feel connected to self and I don't know, like there's a plan to all of this or there's a life experience that isn't just willy nilly and that we can have some fun while we're expanding, while we are waking up as the phraseology goes, and while we're helping each other to really understand what it means to be a soul and in a human vessel and then vice versa, the human self helping the soul to expand because it's not one way. It's multifaceted and we didn't come in as a soul having a human experience. I hear that all the time. Not a fan of that. I believe the human experience is helping the soul and the soul is helping the human experience. We don't need to make one greater than the other or more important than the other. And we don't have to negate the fact that being human comes with some challenges and comes with some some learning curves. This week, I was actually just cleaning my office and found this note and thought, I'm going to record this while it's at the top of my head. And oftentimes when I'm working with someone, if something comes up that I feel is relatable to the rest of us, because, you know, humans... If it's relatable, I'll ask permission to share it once we've worked through everything. I mean, I don't stop in the moment and just think this is all about me. (laughs) But I'll ask, is is it okay if I protect your identity, if I share this? Because I believe that we are each other's greatest teachers. And if we're going to learn, we have to be willing to learn from everyone, everything, all the experiences, and be present enough to be able to say, oh, this is a good one. And if it moves one person, I believe it will move another. And if this helps one person, well, then job well done to both my client and myself. We were having a uh, coaching session and a lot of what I've assisted her with is the big transitions in life. Children leaving the home and becoming independent, a divorce, and now the most recently sale of the marriage home and then purchasing of another home. These, oh, let's not forget the dog that is, you know how cats have nine lives? I think this dog has 42. (laughs) And she's a sweetie and she perks up as soon as she hears my voice. Sometimes she has to go out as soon as she hears my voice on the uh, Zoom call. But part of it is helping a part of our experience together, uh, the client and I, not the dog, has been to help her navigate what are some treatment options for this little bugger that seems to have all the uniqueness of, um, I don't know, herself. She's just amazing and her wiring is confusing. So it covers the gamut coaching does, right? And although the majority of my clients are entrepreneurs or starting businesses or in business and changing business, um, it's all about the major changes in life. So I love helping people transition through those things because I feel like the majority of it comes to actually believing in yourself. And in believing in yourself, you get to know yourself, who you are, how you're wired, what is your own intuitive sense, what is your logical sense, what is your cognitive sense. It all works together. The more that we know ourselves, the easier it is to trust our own decisions and our own navigation of life. And one of the things in coaching (laughs) that is uh, brilliantly sad sometimes is when both the client and I decide that they are complete and that they've done a good job with getting to know themselves and they are ready to be responsible for themselves and to be 
uh, the one that is checking in with themselves more often and just don't need me anymore. And I have had clients in the past who are almost apologetic about that. But if you're in, if you're in a coaching relationship or a therapy relationship, uh, your therapist or coach should want you to not need them anymore. And it's not that we don't love you. Of course, we want to see you and talk to you and share in the milestones and the growth and everything. But it's not meant to be a codependent relationship. And if you're in the relationship with one, well, that's a good time to get another therapist or coach to work through it. Uh, But the process of being able to understand yourself is confusing. We have so many messages from childhood, from uh, society, from previous lifetimes, from the desires that I thought last week, I wanted to knit a blanket. Turns out this week, I can't stand the feeling of yarn. You know, that kind of thing where you understand who you are and how you're wired and everything becomes the skill to develop. And it's not fundamentally difficult to understand, but it is so challenging to walk through. So one of the sessions that we were uh, talking about the process of kids moving out of the house and how that is difficult. And even though that's our job to raise adults, we are not raising children. We are raising adults. Please raise adults. Please Could you please raise some adults? It still hits so close to that solar plexus and the heart space when they are ready to navigate on their own. And if you parent like my client and I, (laughs) oh, some might call it um, going easy on them. But one of the things that I used to do uh, for my daughter was if she needed groceries, I was just going to drop groceries off. I was not going to question that. And we were talking about this. My client and I were talking about this. And I'm going to call her Rosie because I feel like it just becomes so impersonal. And I do think of my clients as uh, my friends and also, you know, just these amazing beings that I get to know. So I'll call her Rosie. And we were talking about the processing of that, of trusting that the kiddo is going to be okay. And yet it's so somewhat impossible to turn off that mom or dad or gram or whatever the relationship is. It's hard to turn that off sometimes and just say, okay, fly, be free. And as we were discussing this, she brought up something that actually frustrated her. And if any of you have had children move or move away and then (laughs) circle back to the house for a dinner or sometimes just stopping by when you're not home and food goes missing. And while on some level, I always feel like, wow, that's a kid that feels secure because they know they can take this food and not receive any repercussions from it on the, having experienced it and been planning on that being my food. And to be clear, this was not my daughter. It was the other two, (laughs) the coming home and having that frustration that it's missing, right? is so annoying because that's, you're trying to get used to the fact that you're only providing for yourself or your partner. Um, and then, you know, they're still doing a flyby occasionally. So as we were talking about this, this is a long way around to my point, but as we were talking about the, the, this happening to her, her uh, daughter had come over and made a comment about not having anything for dinner. And Rosie had just purchased one of those roaster chickens. And she's like, oh, even though she was planning on that being several meals for her for the week, she's like, go ahead and take it, take it home. And then she was so mad because there was no thank you. There was no uh, regard given for the sharing of her food. And 
we could stop there and we could say, yeah, that was rude. That was something that wasn't okay. And just call it a day there, right? Side with Rosie and say, yep, rude child. But I kept feeling like there were more layers. And this is often what happens when I'm working with someone is I will feel the layers underneath what they're saying. And one of the lines I've said is, I see through, it's what I do. I see through what the words are, what the cover is to what's really going on underneath because we need to look at that and we need to discuss it and we need to break it down if possible and maybe, you know, rework those neural pathways and get things to shift so that it's no longer holding on. There's no longer resentment or anything there. So as she's talk, as Rosie's talking about this and how mad she was that her daughter hadn't even expressed a thank you nor her daughter's partner, um, and I was feeling into it, I said to her, this is not about chicken. And because she's familiar with me, she's like, oh boy, here we go. And I said, no, it's fine. Just, But we do need to look at this because this isn't about the fact that she took the chicken or you even gave the chicken away. So you're a little upset with yourself because you didn't have a boundary there. This is whatever emotion is underneath that, that's coming up, that is causing and the anger is covering for, because anger often covers up hurt and it is a good defense mechanism, but it's also a good distractor because once you get angry, there's adrenaline, there's energy that flows, and it can distract you from actually what's underneath, what's hurting underneath there. So when I asked her, well, what could be underneath this? What is the chicken representing? (laughs) The emotion that came up was so hard, but so beautiful at the same time, because anytime you need to release it's often propelled or pushed up from that solar plexus because your power center is just going to push right through that heart center to the throat and get this energy out. So the emotion that was coming up was actually the sadness around the relationship that she thought she had with her daughter, but it's turning out to not be true. And This happens a lot when our children become adults and they are of their own soul's journey. They are showing who they are. We hope we gave them some help and some boundaries and some basic tenets of manners, but we can't enforce that all the time, nor can we beat ourselves up if they're not using it. If you laid down the groundwork well, then you just have to trust that they're going to come back around to it. So as we were talking about this emotion that's coming up, it's since become a line that we use. Like if there's something there that you you want to distract the sleight of hand, let's talk about this over here, the anger about not being appreciated. And yet it was the energy underneath of sadness of what, she thought was the relationship and all this effort that we put into parenting and then it not being returned in a way that we thought it might. And that's disappointing. It's frustrating. It is heartbreaking at times to recognize that you may have put all this energy into this relationship with this person that you thought was going to, you know, be in your life as an adult and maybe turn around and support you in some way emotionally, or at least you'd have a great adult working relationship. And when that doesn't happen, it's, it's, um, well, it can be devastating. And I wanted to bring this up because We have to start helping ourselves by recognizing these are souls that come into their lives to do their lives too. And I'm not saying that we put up with poor behavior or that manners aren't 
important because I readily know as a mother and a fresh mouth, I would have said something like, you're welcome. And of course, I want to provide this. And if we do things expecting to get a thank you, I don't think we're authentically there. But if this was my young child, younger adult, I would still show up and and say, you know, this is where we say thank you. Because there can be a reminder needed as well. So if you've had a relationship where you are now seeing that they're different people, and especially with your children, or maybe it's with your partner or a coworker, or maybe it's your business partner, and you have to figure out, how am I going to do this? The first thing we have to do is figure out what the emotions are underneath frustration, anger, disappointment, any of the feelings of lack, like there's something missing there. Because if you don't understand where that emotion is coming from, you're going to be handing chicken out all over the place. You're going to be giving out roasters. Everybody gets a roaster, right? So connecting in and part of the practice that we did was to go deeper and deeper into what are these feelings? Like, what are you really feeling? I hear you're saying frustration and what are you frustrated with? Okay, how did you get to that place that it caused the frustration? How could you do that differently next time? What is the uh, plan that you'll have to support yourself emotionally? And then do you respect yourself enough to have that boundary? Because the way that this could have gone was maybe give her 10 bucks to buy something on the way home. And would it have been junk food? Maybe. Um, but this is again where we have to back up a little bit as parents and let them experience the world and be there maybe just as the bumpers and bowling to get the ball back into the center of the, um, of the lane, which I really appreciate because I can throw a mean gutter ball. <laughs> Did you know that most people work with me as a coach because they want to move forward in their professional lives? And then they realize once we start working together, that is a whole person approach and I am going to help them move through their blocks, their fears, some of the trauma they've experienced and to create a much more aligned life. So many times I hear, this is not what I thought I was signing up for. And that's such wonderful feedback to have because if you're signing up and working with a coach and everybody does it the same, are you really being seen as an individual? At Vicki Baird Coaching, I do it all as an individual and I would love to work with you. Go to vickybaird.com to check it out and see if you'd like to work with me. So if you're going through this right now with your young adults um, or even your younger children, where they're actually showing themselves to be much different than the picture you had in your head, I'm going to suggest a magic eraser and go in and, and erase that picture that you had in your head. Because if you're putting your perceptions on who, what or who another soul should be so that you feel like you did a good job. You're putting way too much pressure on that other person. And if we are good with ourselves and then accepting of other people, I really do believe that we will be in a much more accepting, kind, compassionate world and yes, we have a lot of work to do, but it all has to start at home. And the home starts with you and with each individual. And if you happen to have young children in your life, you can help them to understand this too, that another person's lack of something or the way they behave or how you want them to behave, who those are very different things. And it's not cut and dry. Like we can't just feel like we can allow poor behavior or not ask for the manners, but there's also a, a, a fine line of deciding, 
when it's no longer your participation as that parent or as that guardian or as that teacher to, you know, keep going back to that well. So the process of not giving your chicken away (laughs) is to recognize, was that chicken important? It was important to her and it didn't, but she felt more compelled to make sure that this young adult had something to eat, which I understand. I really understand. But my question to her was, did you do it out of some kind of parental guilt? Did you do it out of some kind of have to? Did you, what was the inspiration or motivation? It's usually motivation. What is the motivation behind that? And the more that you can understand that, even looking at the kids that might be in your house right now, what's your motivation or inspiration when you're interacting with them? Are you looking to get their, you know, undying approval? Are you looking for them to just mind you and not have a thought of their own? Uh, What is your relationship with them as their own individual soul? And then what is your expectation as their parent? I was working with another client this week and we were helping, well, I was helping her to understand that there was a romantic picture of what her relationship might look like with her young daughter. And this young (laughs) girl is um, powerful. She's powerful. She's so smart beyond her years. And with that, she's very good at figuring out what the adults want to hear. She's also very good at pushing the adults' buttons. And if you show me a kid that's not manipulative at some stage in their life, I'm going to be a little concerned about the kid because yes, there are very sweet, sweet children out there, but there is no such thing as unconditional love. You can love your kids. You can love them. And yes, I do believe more than ourselves. We can love them, but there's conditions on things. We we want a certain behavior or we want them to stay clean or we want them to get you know, decent grades, or we just want them to pick up their dang socks. So as I'm working with this other mom whose daughter is much younger, I was sharing with her a similar idea of, I understand that there's this notion that mothers and daughters are going to be so close and, you know, the carbon copies and, and it's a beautiful thing to have a daughter. It is, but that pressure to have that type of relationship interferes actually with the relationship that could be there. And if we, if you start to see the kids in your life as their own souls traveling to understand why they're here, it will help you to back up off of that pressure on them and on yourself for things to be perfect. Because like I said in a previous podcast, it just does not exist. So as as you are assessing your relationships with your children and with other people in your life, please, please, please start to look at them as their own souls and get curious about, well, I wonder what their soul wants to learn because we're all coming in to learn. I wonder what their intention is. I wonder if I'm here to help them arrive in whatever they will be of service in the world and not necessarily to be that ooey gooey connection. It will take the pressure off of even the societal message that if you don't necessarily jive with your kid or like your kid all that much, um, it doesn't mean you don't love them. And it doesn't mean that you aren't the one that they chose. It simply means that you might have to adjust expectations of parenting and you may have to adjust your expectation of that child in your life. And with that, come to some acceptance that they don't owe us anything. They don't have to be what we want them to be. 
And th- we do want individuals and we do want those that are capable of sustaining their own independence, their own thought process, their own identity. And in order to do that, we have to be able to become less involved in who they are being a reflection of our parenting or who they are being a reflection of us. And I know it's hard. I raised three and have a relationship with one of them. The other two are tenuous at best. And because of boundaries I had to create in in order to <laughs> let go of the notion that this stepmama was going to heal every little boo-boo that was created from the bio mom. It just wasn't possible. So it takes courage, I think, to not give everybody your chicken, like <laughs> not give them everything you have because you want that that commitment back or you want the same level of reflection of your love back. And I'm, I have empathy, great empathy for parents who have this notion that this is going to be their fate even, which doesn't really exist, but I can understand the desire for it. And it doesn't turn out to be true. And to be clear, I'm not talking about parents that judge their children for their gender identification or sexual orientation, or heck, the fact that they want to be a rock star and not go to medical school. I'm not talking about all that stuff. I am talking about the idea that we enmesh ourselves in our children, understandable, but it would be helpful if you saw them as their own individual beings first and then you are some sort of influence on their life. Because where it got out of balance in the chicken thing is Rosie is a very, very giving person, a very put her life on complete hold for the sake of her daughter and is now having some challenges with that. And that's not on the daughter though. That is not on her to hold. So when we can separate ourselves out, we can see, oh shoot, that is not what they were even asking for. You know, I chose to be this person's parent (laughs) and I can come to the healing within myself that they don't owe me anything, but I owe me self-respect and I owe myself the dignity and the courage to be able to look at what's below the frustration of them taking the chicken. So I know this was rambling, but I really did feel like it needed to be a stream of consciousness and boy, I hope it makes sense. Um, because I feel like a lot of parents are grappling with this and I don't think there's enough conversation out there about we are not guaranteed to get the kids we like. And you might like them so much one year and not the other. Oh, nine and 11. They, they tested every bit of patience that I had. Um, so if you take anything from this roundabout message, recognize that while children are a gift in our lives and while we may even participate in bringing them in physically, we are only the stewards for a very short time until they are capable of being in and of their own selves. And I've also seen the opposite. I've seen grown adults who couldn't let go of their parents and I've had to say, oh my goodness, okay, we are going to stop. They are not responsible for raising you anymore after you are a card carrying adult. There's just so much and so many layers to this that have been studied for eons, right? I'm suggesting an energetic perspective so that you can apply 
the help that you might have gotten from your therapist or doctor or you know spiritual advisors but i'm also suggesting this because when we see our children most especially but others in our lives as their own individual souls there is less codependency that happens and there is more appreciation and less guilt and less burden on people because then being together becomes of choice. And if you are someone who is raising, uh, you know, those preteens, the teens, and they're in that place where they're really discovering their own knowing of who they are, be willing to ask questions. Don't supply the answers. Ask questions and shut your mouth. Listen to what they have to say because the souls that are here are brilliant. And I don't want to put them on a pedestal, nor do I want to fluff their ego, but they do come with a more evolved energy than we did. And I think it's important to pause and to listen and to consider their perspective on any situation. And yes, they should say thank you. (laughs) <laughs> that's just part of being a kind human and holding the door for people and allowing someone to go in front of you and doing something kind when you're feeling stuck within yourself, helping others. And I am so blessedly grateful to have adults, children, and not be in that place anymore that my heart and my well-rested energy <laughs> goes out to you parents who have been na- navigating these last couple of years as well. Um, the changes are going to keep happening. There, we're just going to keep seeing greater and greater evolution of these, these souls that are coming in to help us understand. So I feel like it's our job to listen. It's a balancing act. We must learn to not give everything um, so that we know who we are when they do their absolutely brilliant, every soul deserves to learn who they are on their own trip. Um, And we need to be supporting in, in that and absolutely you can close the door and have a good cry. (laughs) Um, And that would be, a loving thing too, but we have to start seeing them as their own beings so that we can also help them and we can get help for them in expressing who they are and how they see the world because it will bring healing. Thank you for listening to my download and my rambling. And I wish you best in all the connections you have with these younger souls in your life. And if your kids are in their 20s, 30s, 40s, practice this. It can be done at any point. Um, And it will bring about an energy shift. And often it brings about peace. And really the other person often feels seen when you do this. And yes, I know it's hard, but you can do hard things. You may have a hundred percent ratio of showing up in every day of your life right now. So I, I believe in you and eventually we get to see them as parents and we get to stand back even further and just love on those other versions they bring to us, be it fur babies or human babies. So thank you very much. And I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to Intuition, Your First Sense. As always, please like and subscribe to this podcast wherever you are listening to it. Leave a review and take a minute to share it with a friend. You can find me all across social media at, at Coach Vicki Baird, and you can book a virtual session with me from wherever you are in the world at VickiBaird.com slash booking. That's V-I-C-K-I-B-A-I-R-D dot com slash booking. Thank you again and see you on the next episode.